in today's video, we are doing a teacher's pay, teacher's question and answer video Q&A. <laughs> there are questions on regarding teacher's pay teachers. There's questions regarding boom. And I think there's one marketing. Stay tuned. Ah. Hey everyone, my name is Lorianne. And if you are new or coming back, welcome here at It's All Primary. We talk teacher side hustles. And just to give you a quick update, dad's doing great. Was over there again um, on the weekend. Cat. X-ray came back. Ah. X-ray clear. Yay. No mass. Yay. Now the fun part. I have to give her antibiotics in a syringe two times a day. Mm. And she's already starting to notice my little change of, you know, routines and she's taken off. <laughs> so I got to give her two different medications twice a, twice a day, every 12 hours. And so one will finish in early next week sometime, I guess, because it'll be almost two weeks. And then the other ones for the rest I have to do all month. You know, it's like... So, but life's good, weather's been beautiful, and just, uh, you know, getting to know the kids, it's, it's, their, their personalities are really starting to come out right now, and it's a lot of fun. Okay, anyways, let's, let's get at this. So, I have uh, popped all the questions, they're going to come up on the screen here, and then I will answer them. Some of these questions, there is no definitive answer. Uh, these are in no particular order, okay, so... Let's get at it. Question number one. Would love to know your thoughts on seasonal versus evergreen versus freebie resources. Is there a ratio you recommend? Also, what marketing platform would you say gives you the best results at this point in your business journey? Thanks, Kimberly. <laughs> you got a, a few questions there. Uh, when I started, I did not do seasonal. I started with pretty much evergreen and freebies. And your question about the ratio or how many freebies, I would honestly say, and I don't, I've never heard someone say this, but I've just kind of done my own checking. I would say under 10, even maybe under 5% of all your resources should be freebies. I have, I'm more than 10% right now because I have, I have eight, I actually have 10 freebies. I've archived two, but they still count in some things. So even at eight, I'm over 10% right now. And I keep wanting to make freebies, but if you want to be a big seller, I actually went to some big seller stores and I looked at their ratio between free and paid. And the two biggest TPT sellers were both under 3%. In fact, one of them what was the numbers again? I, I wrote these down and I can't remember where he put the piece of paper. I think they only had 10 freebies for 400 products. Like, I mean, that's, that's not, that's, I don't even know if that's 1%. But their numbers were low, very low. So again, whether back in the day <laughs> when they probably started, which is, you know, 10 years ago, they just didn't make freebies is a possibility but they're they're not making freebies now either so the big sellers don't have a lot of freebies i think more than newer sellers we tend to have more freebies but again i mean i look at some of my freebies i look at some of the freebies i get online and they could have easily charged easily three five dollars because they're they're huge tpt does not recommend freebies more than 10 pages which is interesting because there are people who are selling freebies that are 50, 60 pages. That's nuts. That's a lot of work. So freebies, I would, I would stay under five, five percent. Again, no one said this like, and if you're, and when you're doing your freebie, keep it under 10 pages, not including your cover, your credits, your terms of use. So with those and, and a how to use page, you could have it maybe 14 pages or less. Okay. Seasonal versus evergreen. This is a good, really good question. I've had this before and I honestly didn't know the answer because again, when I started making products on TPT, I didn't make seasonal. 
I made evergreen. Now that I've had a store for over a year, I actually am making seasonal products and though it's those seasonal products that are bringing more sales in because I'm looking at what's trending for the month of October or the month of November because that's what you should be looking at right now. October started. If you're making Halloween products, get them out now. Even though there will be people that will post a product maybe the last week of October and they'll get a sale because there will be people that will be looking. Look right now at November, even December. And when it comes to marketing, which you asked about, Pinterest is still my uh, choice. It's still my choice. I'm going to talk about uh, another way to market, which I mentioned in a previous video, but I'll bring it up with one of the other questions. But what Pinterest recommends is you, in order to gain traction on a pin, you want to be putting something out almost three months prior to the event. So for example, if you were making a pin for a Halloween product that you made, it should have already been out by now. I know it's, it's, it's early October, it's too late to gain traction. But if you put out something in Christmas now, which honestly I'm not even ready, but now that I say that I should be thinking, I should be, I have two possibilities that I could quickly make new pins or fresh pins for, for Christmas to gain track, enough traction for. You know, people are thinking back to school in May and June, right? So, and I would say have a good mix of evergreen and seasonal. You never know what people are going to be attracted to in your store. So experiment. Right now, uh, part of me thinks you could easily do 50-50 when it comes to seasonal versus evergreen. But I think if you really want to make some larger dollar products, which tend to be the evergreen products, you, you know, that could be 70, 30 or, you know, 80, even 20, I, you know, something in that neighborhood. No, 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 I wouldn't say 80, 20. I would say no more than 70, 30. Yeah, like I said, play with that with your store. See what people gravitate to in your store. Because, again, you may make seasonal products and people may buy them or they may not buy them, right? This year, I made the decision to make some products that are trending. So TPT tells you what's trending in the search right now. So if you're a quick maker of products, you could look to see what's trending right now, which is the fall, Halloween, orange shirt day just uh, was trending because we had orange shirt day a little over a week ago, I guess. And reading comprehension, math is trending, right? So these things are what people are looking for. So those are the products I would be going for. So what's trending? is what's selling for me right now. I actually have, um, oh, before I forget, actually, I, I did a little experiment. Remember when I said I try to get some products up onto the first page? They're selling. <laughs> Yoo-hoo, woo-hoo. <laughs> okay, anyways, that was a long answer, sorry. I, I'm i gonna say start with 50-50 and see then what your audience is buying and then move it. That would that would be my final kind of final answer on that one. Okay, Kimberly? <laughs> Right, great question. Question number two. This one's a long one. <laughs> the question. Do you recommend having boom card bundles in TPT? I used to have a bundle of them, bunch of them, but I removed them when I found out Boom Learning charges you a commission when you sell a bundle on TPT. You don't get charged when you sell an individual product on TPT. That's true. I thought that having a paid commission twice for a bundle TPT Boom made having Boom bundles on TPT not worth it. What's your take on this? Thanks, Victoria. Victoria, I used to think that too. And then I thought, what's the end goal? My end goal is to make a sale, right? If it's going to help somebody, I don't know why people would rather buy on T Well, actually, I do know. People want to buy on TPT so they can get the credits. Not everybody, but many do, right? And Boom doesn't put sales on. So some of them are hoping for a sale on TPT. They'll buy them, bundles, because bundles often sell during uh, sales. What I did to Victoria is I put my I put one bundle out just to see how much of a charge it was going to be on Boom. And it was 10%. So if your product is $10, 
it's one dollar it's a one dollar fee is that right did i do that right i have to now think about that i need a calculator i'm going to pause this let me get a calculator <laughs> let's say you have a bundle that is twenty dollars and you you created it in boom because there is a boom bundle link as opposed to a product uh, boom link so you have a, this boom link and you so you upload this over at tpt as a twenty dollar product as long as you've got the premium membership you will be charged um, twenty percent because it's over three dollars right so twenty dollars twenty percent four dollars so that's down to sixteen dollars for your product and then boom will take uh, ten percent which it would be two dollars two dollars so you're losing six dollars from a twenty dollar product that's fourteen dollars that to me is still worth it it's still worth it to me i have two bundles maybe three that are from boom and they're they're both oh, i can't even remember how many there are anyways i believe they're almost all under 10 or they're in the 10 to 15 dollar range that's a dollar 50 that's 10 percent so to me because they're not charging you the 15 percent as well they're only charging you the 10 percent okay it's worth it to me if it's a sale it's a sale and yeah i would rather make the sale i'm not charging i'm not i'm not making a dollar off it i'm still making decent amount of money so that my take on it is i would i would do it i would because even if you thought about it a hundred dollar product a hundred dollar bundle is a ten dollar discount so that's so that's 90 and then the, you're losing 20 dollars for the percentage on tpt you're at 70. wouldn't you still rather make 70 dollars than not some buyers will only buy on TPT. You know, it's a lot of extra work putting your boom, and there's a video coming up actually next week on putting boom over onto uh, TPT. It is a lot of extra work, but it's still a sale. And you and I have some boom cards that sell super well on TPT, and they don't. Those same boom cards don't sell well on boom. Kind of bugs me, but it's a, a sale is a sale. So I personally think it's worth it, but that's what I mean. Take your calculator, <laughs> take your calculator and work it out and ask yourself, is it, is it still worth it for you? You know, even an $8 bundle, 80 cents, right? It's, it's, I think it's worth it personally. Okay. So that answered it. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I have a slouch in there reading this. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. Do you think there needs to be a goal amount of products to post on TPT to make a consistent monthly income? Bianca. This is an often asked question and I can't say yes or no because and I've and actually I've seen this question in the TPT sellers forum on TPT. This gets asked because there seems to be people are looking for that magic number and it I think it really depends on your niche. I de it depends also on what you consider a month a consistent monthly income. My goal is a thousand a month. And then maybe when I get to a thousand a month, I might want to go higher, right? But my goal is to actually only make a hundred products for a thousand a month. That's my goal. I met someone who did it and I went, if she can do it, I can do it. And she was in a, she's not in a, as saturated niche as I am, which means I need to do better marketing and things like that. I'm willing to do that. So you need to figure out for yourself, Bianca, what's a consistent income? whether that be 100 a month, 500 a month, 1,000 a month, 5,000 a month, and then look at see who's doing it already and then ask, just ask them. And again, find out their niche because I know some high school teachers are making a killing of less than 50 products. And a killing I'm saying is $1,000 or higher. So again, it depends on your niche, your mar how you market, your visibility. There's, there's things that, you know, are dependent upon that answer. My goal number is 100. <laughs> 100. I might, and I'll, I might, I'll probably go past it, but right now I'm not in any rush to go past it. And when it happens, you will get a video from this. Next question. Can you tell more, tell us more about pricing the worksheets if it's black and white or colored? Is there a difference? And if you provide Google and easel choices for the buyers, how do you, how to price? Not a 
or Nada, Nada, sorry, if I butchered your name. This is another it depends type question. This is something I learned, I think it was the TPT conference or just after the TPT conference, when it comes to pricing products. Your buyer does not care how much work you put into a product. You can put, I've put hours and hours and hours into a product and that product, I'll, I'll sell it higher and it, it's like crickets, cue the crickets. And then the next thing I know, I drop it about a $2 and now I start getting sales. Because it's not about what I think it's worth, it's what the buyer thinks it's worth. And if the buyer can find my, a similar product to mine or to yours for $5 less, they're going to be starting questioning, why are you higher, why are they lower? You don't want to underprice your products. So for example, if you look, say you're making, um, first of all, black and white, it doesn't matter whether it's black and white or colored to most people. I mean, it, they, it, they matter because if it's colored, they don't want to blow money on ink. So they're not even, they're not willing to pay more if it's colored. They might be willing to be paid more if you give them a PDF for paper and Google. You could add a price, to extra, extra bucker to, to that, right? I don't um, charge more if it's an easel product because they can do that on them. They can do that themselves if it's a PDF. If it's a Google, they can't. If, uh, sorry, if it's a Google. If it's a Google Slides product, they can't do that. But if it is a PDF, they can do it all. They don't, so you, I don't see how you can charge more for that. So let's go back to this PDF. If you have a PDF and then you turn around and add a Google Slides to it, I think you can add, I can, you can add a little bit there to it. But you've got to go online and look to see your what your competition is selling it at. And again, don't underprice it. The funniest thing, and I, I was told this and I didn't believe it and then I saw it. When someone is significantly less, they don't think, oh great, it's a deal. They think, why is it so cheap? They question the quality. So you try to keep your price in line with what the competition is doing. If you think, if, you're double, if your file is double the size, sure, price it more. You gotta do a little bit of research with your products. There is no one set price. At one point I was told start with a 10 cent to 20 cent per page price. There are certain niches such as um, speech and language, ELL, that go higher than 20 cents a page. But again, these are th those are just benchmarks. You've got to think of it from the buyer's point of view. How much do you think they're willing to pay for your product? Okay. Hope that helps. I tend to go online, look at what everyone else is selling theirs for, and then I compare products. Size, that's why it's really important that when I see a product on TPT, if they don't specify how many pages, I, I almost won't buy it. Because I'm like, why are they not telling me, disclosing to me how big this file is? Just to say PDF is not good enough. And, that, and if you're not doing, if you are not telling your potential buyer how big your product is, you're blowing it. You've got to tell them. Do you also put dashes on your files before uploading to TPT? For example, site-words-for-toddlers. Okay, <laughs> this is a this is an interesting question. This comes from a big seller who does this, but there's a whole reasoning behind why they do this, okay? And I don't want to butcher the information. I'll, I'll, I'll try. I'll try and be as clear as possible. But um, this is, like I said, this is um, a, a big seller on TPT. Why they did this is when you make something for Google's analytics, okay, for the Google algorithm, they like dashes. Now I said in a previous video that the TPT algorithm changes, tweaks all the time. And because of that, no one really knows exactly how to beat the TPT algorithm. But people know how to beat the Google algorithm. And those dashes are one way to get your stuff up the ranks in Google. Okay? Because what ends up happening is if you upload a product and you put dashes in it. So say you, so here's what's her example here. Say you make a t set of task cards 
and you label the task cards uh, site dash words dash task cards dash for dash toddlers. TPT will actually remove the dashes when it uploads. You won't see the dashes, but Google still sees it. How that works, I don't know. I really don't know how that works. People get sales. People get sales. So this seller does do webinars and she sh shares them in her webinars. Um, I'm not going to get into it. I don't, I'm not going to judge it. It works. But one of the things, here's a, the one caution. So, so uh, Caddy or Katie asked me, do I do it? Sometimes. Because where I stopped doing it is people were having problems downloading zip files that had dashes in them, especially if it was a Mac, I think was the situation. And I saw this in face groups, uh, Facebook groups a few times um, last spring, I think it was. And I thought, eeks, is that because I'm putting those dashes in? So I didn't want to have that kind of problem. I don't want someone complaining they can't download something because I've put dashes in the titles. I don't know if that's the case. It might be something completely different, but I thought I'm, I'm not going to do it. So I, I do it a little bit. I'm not, like I said, it's not my trick. So I don't really want to talk about it a lot, but it, if that sort of, if you want to know more information, send me an email about it and just write dashes. Who's, who's, who talks about dashes, and I will send you their name, and then you can look it up on their stuff, okay? And, and again, just attend their webinar, and they'll talk about it. They get success with it, so, I mean, if you want to try it, give it a try. Next question. I have more people who put my products on their wish list than they buy, so how much do they convert? How much do they convert to buyers? So how much do they convert to buyers? I'm new, but I don't have enough information and data. Data, yes, there's a couple things happening here. First of all, a lot of times people will put your product on a wish list for a couple of reasons. One, they might think it's too high and they're waiting for a sale. Two, they're just searching things out and they're looking, they're just looking, right? So there's a couple things at play here. Where the number that you really want to be looking at is your conversion rate. So if you're selling a product and your conversion rate is under three to five percent, something is not not right. And we don't and I can't say what it is because I'd have to look at the whole picture. It could be that you haven't provided enough information on your store. Right? When you look at the product description, you haven't given them enough information, so they're not gonna buy it. You might not have provided enough thumbnails or product video for them to see it. Okay? There's different factors as to why that conversion could be down. So what am, what am I trying to say? Um, I wouldn't look so much as at the wish list as the conversion rates. And even if you only have made a couple sales, look to see what your conversion rates on just those products that have sold. Okay. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's what I would do. Question. What do I do? I'm not making sales. Do I market more or make more products? I'd say both. I would say make more, just keep making products. Again, look to see what's trending. Maybe make some seasonal products, make some Christmas products right now. And I would look to see if you're on Pinterest, right? Make some idea pins. Idea pins get big conversions fast, okay? Like my idea pins are in the thousands as opposed to my video pins, which are in the hundreds. And some of my static pins are in like in the low hundreds, right? There's quite a difference. So I'd be making, I'd be marketing more. So I'd say do both, do both. My battery's about to die. I think I'll change the battery, okay? S s cliffhanger. Okay, fresh battery. Let's keep going. This is, and this was, I should have actually talked about this one with the other bundles question. I'm not really sure how bundles work on TPT. Let's say I upload a product and sell it at $5. A few weeks later, I upload a second product and sell it at $5 as well. Since these two products are part of the same product line, I decide to bundle them and put a price of $750 on the bundle. What if someone had already bought the first product? Would they pay $250 more if they want the bundle? Mar Maria. Maria, um, actually, I, this one was from the our TPT, or sorry, our Facebook group. Yes, in, in 
but not they got it's it becomes a refund so if you have a bundle and somebody has purchased one of the products separately and then they see that bundle and go oh i could have bought the bundle they can write tpt and tpt will refund them the difference between what they've already bought and the cost of the bundle so they can do that and it's great and one of the things i also recommended in the, in the facebook group is that first of all when you make a bundle i always write a little comment that this is part of a bundle tpt will also make a little um a snippet that says this is part of a bundle so they will see that okay the other thing you might want to even consider is a growing bundle now what you need to do is need to know exactly what you're making because you're going to advertise what's coming and a possible timeline of what's coming right so i'm actually i have purchased i have at least i think two growing bundles that i've bought and people keep uploading things to this particular product line it's great right i i mean it sounds like it's you know the amount is high but then when you know it's a growing bundle and they're promising these five or six more products then you're thinking hey this is worth it and then you buy it right and that's what they anticipate that's how they work now you can do there's a couple ways you can do bundles one you can do um, a bundle that tpt does and so when you add a product or create a product you can create a bundle and then tpt will list out all your products and you put all the various ones in your bundles okay one of the things that i mentioned in a previous video is you can almost bundle your whole store depending on how many products you have so for example i have 65 in there including freebies i could bundle the whole store and say whole store bundle i can't even imagine what it would cost it probably won't cost much because most of them are three dollars <laughs> but that's that's a thought too or if you've got you know a product line make a bundle you can make double bundles right there's all sorts of things you can do be creative okay so i hope that answers question Okay, so this one was actually a question from one of the questions in the comments below in one of the videos. Can can you tell me if you check off Texas or Common Core in your products? How do we research this? As a Canadian, yes, sometimes, but you have to be very thorough. Common Core has a main website. Texas is called Teeks, T-E-K-S, I think it is, Teeks, something like that. Texas Education, I, I don't know. <laughs> something like that anyways yes research them and you can tick them off but just to so you know this and i didn't know this until after the fact the only people that see that are the people that actually are live in those areas so if you research uh the texas standards and you say oh this product will actually meet this standard you can click off the or click the right boxes no one like me in canada i would not see that but if i lived in texas and i was under the texas standards i would see that okay same with common core common core only shows up for those states that actually continue with common core and they're getting smaller so more states are moving themselves off common core so yes research them because I started doing them and then I found out they were the some of their standards were a little bit more elaborate and one of the questions in the ratings when you buy a product did it fully meet the standards eek so I got a, I got dinged on that one one time you know learn you learn okay let's do one more question in your newsletter you mentioned changes in boom and making sure decks are op optimized I would love to hear more about that thanks French professor CC boom has been changing their algorithm and how things are searched they're also cracking down on people who keyword stuff and i'm sure tpt is not far behind on this one there is a lot of teachers that keyword stuff i've seen teachers right here on youtube recommend keyword stuffing please don't listen to that advice i don't know if it how it affects tpt and at the moment i don't think it does but it could in the future and you may not remember which ones you keyword stuff. Boom is saying they'll literally suspend the product, maybe suspend the store if you're caught keyword stuffing. So one of the things you need to do when it comes to optimizing is you really need to know your keywords 
because you can only put so many in. There, there is a character um, limit of how many you type. Okay, so you really need to know your key words. So if you're doing addition to 20, are you gonna do addition to 20, adding to 20, you know, doubles to 20? It almost sounds like it's keyword stuffing. You have to be careful with what you're saying. So you gotta look at the skills of what kids will learn and then use those skills and write it fully in your product description. A lot of boom sellers do not write very elaborate descriptions of their product. You know, they just think, oh, they can look at the first four things, but I wanna know what they're, what what the hope of this one is. I And I, I, you know, sometimes I'm guilty of that too. Sometimes you just wanna upload a product as fast as possible. Let's just get it on there. The more you elaborate on your product descriptions, both in Boom and in TPT, the better, the better the buyer knows what your product is going to offer and then they can make a more educated guess whether to they want to buy it or not right so optimizing if you're not sure about optimizing with boom there are two things you can do by the way pinterest is one of them pinterest offers keywords okay you've kind of got to do it in a roundabout way i don't know if i've ever made a video on that maybe i will if you want a video on keywords for pinterest let me know i can i sometimes go to tpt because often i'm selling T, uh, boom products over onto tpt and i also go to google Right, and I showed you in the previous video on keyword research. I can use Uber Suggest to find keywords. I can go to Keywords Everywhere for keywords. I can go to some different places to find those keywords and what they're searching for. So that's how I would optimize. Me personally, I'm selling more boom cards on TPT, so I'm giving thumbnails, I'm writing things like why this is a good product for your classroom or for home or something like that. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think that's it for now. All right, so next video is going to be a boom tutorial on get, getting your boom over to TPT. I, I've mod got a mental note, I'll try to remember, to show you a boom bundle as well and then how to bring it over to TPT. I have some already so I can show you how to do that. They're pretty easy. I think they're easy. Like I said, it's more the thumbnails, product description, you know, those kind of things you got to do. There are a lot of new TPT sellers. Welcome to this channel and I'm going to be doing a couple videos on starting a store and then I've got some product tutorials coming as well. So wherever you are in the world, I hope you and your family are staying safe, being healthy. Don't lose hope. Don't lose it. Keep the faith and we'll catch you in the next videos. See ya.